Thank you. You know, before, before you start asking me questions and I answer, uh, I'm absolutely overwhelmed to be here this evening. And, I'm, and I mean everything. Everything that I say, respected uh, Mr. Shiv Nadar, his wife, daughter Roshni, husband and the family. You know, when I walked in here, it was, it was breathtaking. And as I was sitting in the, in the room, the conference room, and I was speaking to Roshni and, and asking how it started and when it started 43 years ago, in this entire Noida, there was only one eight cell office uh, in this entire barren space. And to see what it is tomorrow, today, is unbelievable. You know, you talk about leadership, you talk about making a change, uh, you know, there can't be a bigger change than this. So, congratulations, sir. Uh, this is the first time I've met you, uh, but uh, enormous respect for what you've achieved and what you've done for, for the company and for the society. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Saurav. And just to add to that, you know, this campus gets excited about a CSR grant every year, and we kind of celebrate socially responsible business this evening with you. And I'll pose some questions. I don't come from the sport fraternity, I come from the development fraternity and we kind of relate that so much with sports that as you work hard every day to bring transformation, the you know, captains from the development fraternity also work very hard. It's at times a question of recognition, it at times a question of acknowledgement and that's the effort that CSR grant, this CSR grant, HCL grant is making. By bringing you in here, we want to hear stories of transformation, stories of change, and we're going to relate through our dialogue, your experiences with this sector and how the country's growth and development story can be written. So to begin with, you got a break in Indian cricket team all the way from Kolkata, which was known for football otherwise. And soft people. And very soft yeah. people. Yeah. yeah. We would want to hear from you your story of struggle in your early days before your debut into Indian team. You know, uh, uh, I was fortunate enough to come from a very affluent family. So, uh, you know, it wasn't a struggle in the real sense, uh, but just like many fathers in this country, they want, want their sons to play cricket. My father wanted me to play the sport. Uh, when I was young in school, I went to St. Xavier's College, St. Xavier's School. I, I don't know if, if there's anybody from Kolkata here uh, will understand. Uh, Many. There are a few. There are a few. So, St. Xavier's, St. Xavier's School was one of the most prominent schools in Calcutta at that time. And I went to that school, so never had to worry about anything. But my father was obsessed with me playing the sport. Uh, born and brought up in a family where mother wanted to study, typical Bengali, Bengali mom where books and, and history and geography and mathematics was very important. But for my father, that cricket bat was very important. So it wasn't a struggle, it was just a young boy wanting to do what he wants. You know, wanting to play the sport at the age of 14 or 15 or 16. You never thought that someday you'll play for India, you'll go on to captain India for more than 200 games and then finish a career. Uh, which, you know, when somebody said at the age of 14 that you'll play 450 games for the country, you would say that no, no, you must be lying or you must be joking. So, uh, it's a process. It's a process in life, and very similar to this. 43 years ago, when this started, it just started with an initiative with somebody, an employee working for someone, coming out and setting things up, and then creating such an empire over a period of time. So, sports works like that. You just got to keep playing. You just got to keep living that particular moment, that day, that match, that event, and prepare for the future. So, you don't think too far ahead. And, and as a young boy then, I never thought so far ahead. I was happy playing the sport, I played first class level and then they, they thought me good enough to play for India. Got dropped for a while which actually helped because I was very young then. I was 17 when I got first picked and then got dropped for four years. Went back to first class cricket, went back to the grind and understood what the game was, what the mental side of the game was and came back as a better player. So sometimes getting dropped and getting rejected is not a bad thing at a very young age. So. It was just an ambition to play for the country and, and, and I believe in life, everything is a process. You know, you get into a profession with the mindset of, of achieving excellence at various stages and at various parts of your career and sport was the same, you know, just kept playing and things started falling in place. Incredible, Saurav, and you know, it takes struggle, hard work, persistence and it took you 
lifetime, you know, to, to set those goals and keep moving towards that. And so much that relates with the story of growth and development, the corporate social responsibility that we are celebrating here with you today. Sort of since your debut, there wasn't any looking back. And I remember that those three consecutive centuries in, in test cricket, and which is a unique world record as far as I know. Uh, what was it that made it happen? And you know, how, how did it feel like from one you to know, next? What made it happen? To be, to be absolutely straight, I knew if I, would, if I wouldn't get a hundred, I wouldn't play for India. Wow. <laughs> so you had to be good enough uh, to get what you want. You know, it's, 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 a, it's a rule in life that if you, if you, want, if you want to have the best, you've got to be the best. And, and that, that's what it was. The competition was enormous. Uh, you know, so many people play the sport in this country, so many millions who want to play for the country and then, you, and then 11 only get picked. So if you, if you slip down the ladder, getting back is, is a Herculean task in this country because the sport is unbelievably popular. The talent of young cricketers in this country is unreal. You know, you go to Delhi, you go to Bombay, you go to Bangalore, you go to Calcutta. You know, you just see just talents turning up one after the other. You know, you should be on a Saturday morning on, in, in one of those streets of Calcutta and you would see fa children with their kit bags on their father's bike or mothers taking them, just obsessed with the sport. So it was that, it was that inner feeling and, and the inner truth which you knew that if you slipped, you won't play again. So when you got in, when you got an opportunity, you make the, make the most of it. So got 100, then got another one and then got another one. So. <laughs> So it just, it just, it just made me feel, you know, the, you know I, I still remember the day when I got a hundred at Lords in 1996 uh, and uh, I went into a press conference and the first thing the media asked me that, uh, so you have proved people wrong and, and the answer I said and I really meant what I said that evening, I said I didn't prove anybody wrong, I just proved to myself that I was good enough at this level. Wonderful. So when you... When you, when you compete at the top level, you know, the most important thing what you need to install in yourself that you will be successful at the top which comes with belief. And it's similar in, in, in the corporate world, you know, when, when this, this, this organization started and, and to where it is now, it cannot happen without hard work and belief. It cannot happen without vision. Change, improvement, attaining uh, I would say great heights and attaining perfection doesn't happen without vision and, and, and whether it's sport, whether it's business, you know, it's, 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 that's the way to go forward. Just live for the day, work hard for the day, but your eyes should be uh, to become the best. And those are such important insights, Saurav. It's like, you know, be it any sector, it takes that passion and your own standards and then keeping to those standards is what it takes, you know, the success demands. You brought in the concept of Team India for the first time. There was this whole concept and you transformed the way the world looked at Indian cricket. You formulated this team which has professionalism, which also had the aggression which was needed uh, in those times, still needed, the confidence and then the team was just, you know, success after success. What kind of leadership does it take and how that leadership can be instilled across? You know, when I, when I first became captain in the year, year 1999 when Sachin gave up, uh, nobody from Bengal ever captained before that. So, as they appointed me captain, uh, I was very happy, which just goes without saying, to, to be fortunate enough to lead your country is probably the best feeling for any athlete or any, any sportsman. But at the same time, I had a huge inf complex or, or a thought process in me saying that, you know, you, you're, you're the only captain from a part of the country where not many people led the country. You know, when, you, when, you, when I grew up, you, you saw players from Bombay captaining India, players from Delhi captaining India, players from Bangalore captaining India, Karnataka, but not many from Bengal. So there was a tremendous desire in me uh, to to gain respect among the people I played. It should, not, it should not be a feeling that, you know, after a couple of months, after a year, they said, yaar, ye to ban gaya tha, lekin isme dam nahi tha. 
so that feeling was 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 deep inside me and 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 i wanted to stand up among all the champions i led you know imagine my first my first team meeting i walked in in cochin and my wife had come because it was my first uh, uh, match as captain and i walked into a room which had sachin which had azhar which had anil kumble which had rahul dravid all who could have been captains on their own merit that's how good they were there were three former captains when whether it was sachin and 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 azhar so to get into that room and to ask those players to play the way you want is never easy the first week the first month the first tour was never easy you know when you sit and tell the best in the world that this is how i want you to play so you had to get your standards up to that level to go and tell them the next morning that this is what i demand of you of performance you know they say the leaders work the hardest this this institution would not have been where it is if the man sitting in front would not have given everything he's had for the last 40 years you know and it's the same it's the same in it's the same in sport maybe we deal with a smaller number of people uh, business and corporate but 1 lakh 31000 employees of hcl so that's that's the that's the uh, you know the vision or that's the magnanimity of this brand but we we deal with 20 a 20 coming from different parts of india and not easy to <laughs> deal with so so you know that's the way it was it was a fierce desire uh, for within me so that people never said ki yaar he's out of place and then then when i became captain um, i used to see how indians were treated abroad you know firstly we are very good team in india where the ball spun and and we had some great spinners over the years the likes of anil kumble and harbhajan singh and and venkatpati raju who would just win you test matches but when you went outside they felt you know they are a talented bunch you know sachin would get a 100 azhar would get a 100 ganguly would get a 100 but india won't win india is not strong enough to beat a series to win a series from here and that was the change you wanted to make you know not just the change within yourself but the change in the way you went about playing cricket the change in the way you uh, you administered the people who you worked with you know in a team sport and as i said we work with 20 it's not just the captain who believes that we need to win a team will only win if the rest 19 believe that we can win and it's the same thing here if this this brand would not be successful if the remaining 1 lakh 30000 people did not believe in this so along with your skills as a batsman along with your skills as a bowler you had to get that installed in your in your teammates that hey listen here here we are to make a difference difference in terms of the way we played our sport difference in terms of the way we trained difference in terms of the way we went about our job discipline and when i say discipline it's sporting discipline i am a firm believer of sporting discipline not someone who sleeps at 8 o'clock in, in the night and makes the first delivery next morning so it's about sporting discipline and and it was that fierce desire to do well so and as i said i was fortunate enough to lead some wonderful players wonderful human beings who themselves wanted a change who along with me believed that indian cricket needs to play this way and that's how it happened it's the passion and it's you know the zeal to do best better and better on that and i think that's what it takes relating it with what happens in hcl grant so many ngos apply and they kind of you know write up their application to the best and then the year next we again receive a better proposal from the same ngos if they've not moved up just to let you know saro we run a program called sports for change which focuses on children from residing in slums of india because they have to live there because of certain circumstances that they are in and we are trying to nurture talent from there and uh, perhaps that's where the country also needs to focus the the difference between the privileged and the underprivileged so the talent is all across and we are trying to do our bit there uh, moving on uh, there were those tough times such as australia under steve walk yeah. and that was an era that these were you know there were these turning points but then you turned it around and india decimated them on multiple occasions yeah. and that was the transformation and how would you relate it with the transformation that is needed 
in India today. You know, transformation and improvement and change happens when you play the best, when you compete with the best. And, and, and that 2001 trip against Australia when, when we beat them after being 1-0 down in the first test in Mumbai and, and down in the first three days of the test match in Kolkata, which we went on to win on day five, uh, just completely changed the team. It's the belief. It's the belief that, you know, we could compete against the best and be the best. So that, that transformed the team completely. I, I always believe in shake-ups, you know. A lot of people say, Ki, yaar, the, keep it going the way it's going. Why do you want to do things differently? But sometimes shake-ups are very are, are good and important. It actually, it actually wakens you up and get, gets the best out of, of the people who you deal with. So we lost the first test in, 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 Mum, in Mumbai. And no one believed that India had the ability to beat that Australian team under war. They had beaten everybody around the world, whether it's in England, South Africa, Sri Lanka, they would just turn up and beat cricket inside. They were so good. Not, not like the Australia now, but the Australia then. So, so you know, when you went, I remember on day three of the test match in Kolkata, I was, I was going back to the hotel and and I was sitting with John Wright, my coach. He's a very good friend of mine, still a very good friend. I said, John, I think both our times are up. You know, the, we are down, Australia got 400, we are 190 all out in the first innings, we are following on. Uh, so let's try and do the best what we can in the next two test matches because I don't see you and me together again after this series. Because either one will go, because you lose to Australia at home and I don't think you will be re-elected as captain. But things changed. You know, Vivius Lakshman and Rahul Dravid was unbelievable. On the end of the day four at Eden Gardens, they were literally on drips. They were literally on drips because they batted for about eight hours and India went on to get 600. I remember on the fifth day, at just before tea, I was fielding at backward short leg and, and Steve flicked Harbhajan and I dropped him. It straight in and straight out. So he turned around and said, I think with this you've lost the test and your captaincy. That's how competitive he was. So I didn't say much to him because I just dropped him and I thought he, he'll save this test match. The first ball after tee, he came, he flicked again and he caught, caught at backward short leg. The next ball after tee and we went on to win the test match and it just, it just transformed Indian cricket because it was a miracle. A lot of people asked me, how did you win it? I said, I don't know because I don't think I'll be able to win such a test match again. We won many more test matches after that, beat Australia in Australia, went on to win the next test match in Chennai and lots of cricket after that. But that fifth day at Eden Gardens was an absolute miracle. And, and they say miracles don't happen, but I do believe miracles happen at times in life. And it actually changes. And it actually changes an, an organization and a team. And we never look back after that. It's a, it, was, it was an enormous self-belief in that side. Ki, hey, listen, we'll turn up in England, we'll turn up in Australia. We will beat them because we are quietly good. And that only happens when the people who you work with from within believe that they're good enough to win and good enough to make a difference. So I'm a firm believer in belief, in confidence, and trying to work hard to attain that. Thank you so much. I mean, that's such an amazing you know, insight and motivation for our NGO captains coming in. Any last message you would want to give us today? As I said, you know, it's, uh, the, the NGOs have, have got selected through a very rigorous process, as Roshni said, over the last six months, through various uh, processes, you had to apply, and there are three finalists. Uh, congratulations to them. Uh, as, as Roshni said, it's, it's on the basis of, it's in the, it's in the sector of education, environment, and health, if I'm right. So, uh, congratulations to, uh, to, to all of you. Hopefully, uh, what you receive tonight here, what you receive tonight here will be used in a, in a, in a, in a very good cause and, and make a difference. She spoke about making a difference. And uh, an 8CL today will, will actually make a difference to the way you go about your job in the next three or four years. I was overhearing her say that they, they review it, how the money has been spent in the next three or four years and try and make it even better. So, so congratulations to 8CL. My sincere good wishes to them that in, in, in their CSR endeavor, they are managing to make such a massive difference uh, to the lives of, of young boys and girls who come from various parts of India. Uh, the, the process itself makes it even more, uh, even more uh, worthy because it's from all over the country. It's not just that you pick at, at your whims and fancies, it's a proper process 
which decides who gets the CSR. And, uh, and uh, that's, uh, that's all I have to say. Hopefully you use it properly. My good wishes to you. Uh, hopefully sports will also become a part of the CSR activity of HCL. And when I say sports, I don't mean cricket because cricket is a blessed sport. Uh, the other sports, non-cricketing sports like athletics, like, uh, like boxing, like swimming, running, triathlons, heptalons. So many people come from, uh, from the villages, from the rural parts of India and just by sheer natural talent make a difference. And, and there are enormous examples of that who just turn up knowing nothing, not even having shoes and winning medals for the country. So hopefully there would be a difference made in that sector also. And, and as I said, uh, just every morning you wake up, I believe in this, that you make your day worthwhile. You make your day, you turn up at work, you turn up at cricket, you turn up at office to make a difference, I think. That should be the motto of every individual who work. Uh, and I see that in this institution. Otherwise, this, this could not have been created over a period of time. So once again, before I finish, I'm extremely honored to be here. Extremely honored to be a part of such wonderful people, such successful people. And, and I sincerely wish that you keep growing because when you grow, you just don't grow. You make a difference to a lot of people. So thank you so much and have a good night. Thank you so much, Padmashri Sri Saurav Ganguly ji, the most popular captain of Indian cricket team.